are tuned into WDG Underground Columbus, home of the unsigned artists. And this is Big C in the Morning. This is the Friday morning radio show that starts your Friday morning off right in your weekend early. How's everybody doing today? I'm I'm doing fantastic. Um, ah, man. I have been not getting a lot of sleep lately. But I did get a lot of sleep last night. It was very nice. And somehow I woke up at 3 in the morning and then just went went back to sleep. I don't know why, but I think it's because I'm getting used to like waking up early for some for some reason. But anyways, welcome to the show. I hope you guys are pumped that this month is almost over because I'm kind of I'm kind of over, you know, October. It's now time to get into November and December cuz that's where the good parts are. You know, Thanksgiving and Christmas. But before we could get to the Thanksgiving and Christmas stuff of 2020, we gotta talk about some Halloween. This is the final Halloween thing that we'll ever talk about. And that is the best and worst candies for um, Halloween. And basically candy in general. So, yeah, and up. We got, we got a comment from Uncle Bub. He says, me too. Yep, me too. Yep, definitely. Anyways... The best and worst candies of all time. Honestly, candy has been around for a long time. And honestly, I feel like candy is, you know, something that brings happiness to, like, a lot of people. Because you can never go wrong with a with a delicious, like, candy bar. It could be maybe a chocolate bar, peanut butter cup. It could be anything. So, um, I found a list of the top 10 most loved and most hated, um, Halloween candies. Um, this was a list created by, um, Forbes, the magazine slash website. I, th- I think Forbes is a magazine, so. So, this is what they said, um, about the top, uh, most loved and hated candies. And I'll give my own personal opinions, and you guys can, you know, chime in on what you think is the worst and best Halloween candies, um, are. So, um... I'm going to start with their most loved um, list. So, at number 10 is a Hershey bar. So, Hershey bars are very delicious. I I think they are. I've always gotten the milk chocolate ones. Like, the, the original, you know, Hershey bar. Because I feel like, you know... Um, I feel like it's just, you know, the normal... Normal chocolate. I think Hershey chocolate is the best, you know, chocolate out there. I mean, if if you like to, you know, disagree with me, you you can. And um, basically, you know, they've got other flavors like almond cookie and cream, cookies and cream, and that's kind of cool that they're you know changing up their formula sometimes. I never tried almond Hershey Hershey bar. I actually tried the Hershey uh, cookies and cream. wasn't a big fan of it. I like Oreos. The Oreos are cookies and cream, but I I don't like you know <laughs> when you combine the Oreo with the Hershey bar. It's it's weird. It's just weird. And uh, we got some comments from Uncle Bub here. He says he fell asleep around three p.m. Woke up at three a.m. Fell back asleep at five a.m. Back up enough to time to catch the show. Awesome. Glad you can tune in, Uncle Bob. It's great to hear from you, man. And he says, yes, Forbes is a magazine, and you can never go wrong with a Hershey bar. Yeah, Hershey bars are delicious. I consider them the best chocolate bar on the planet. On the planet. Uh, Forbes at number nine. They said Skittles at number nine. Eh, you can't go wrong with Skittles. I mean, it's basically fruit. It's basically fruit into a candy with sugar. I like Skittles, but I don't like them that much to just go, like, insanely eat them. Like, I usually have, like, Skittles when I'm, when I have, like, no chocolate around me. So I just might have, like, a pack of Skittles and just, like, eat one or maybe two, maybe the whole pack. But, yeah. I like Skittles. I haven't tried any... I think I've actually tried the sour Skittles, and they were really sour. 
I like the plain original Skittles because you never you can't go wrong with a with like a juicy apple or a juicy orange or juicy lemon. Like the original is like going to be the best Skittles ever. Um, there are other flavors. I think there's a wild berry Skittles. Um, but uh, I've I've never I never um. I never tried uh, the Skittles. But, um, yeah, Skittles comes at number nine. Number eight goes to um, Sour Patch Kids. Sour Patch Kids are actually the mom. They are actually a really good, you know, um, they're really good, um, you know, candy. Because every time you buy, like, you buy into the, Sour Patch Kid. It's sour, but then it's sweet. Like, every time I bite into, like, say, like, a lemon um, Sour Patch Kid, my mouth just goes, oh, that's sour. Yeah, like, my face, like, literally swells up, and I just cannot imagine the sourness that just makes your face. It just goes, mmm. And, and I heard, like, you know, Sour Patch Kids, they actually gone, like, a step forward in, like, candy. They've, like, released a bunch of, like, you know, breakfast cereals of Sour Patch Kids. Um, there was an ice cream. I think there was, like, a, I think there was, like, a drink mix of Sour Patch Kids. Like, seriously, there was, like, a literal drink mix. And, uh, yeah. But Sour Patch Kids are pretty good. Uh, but I'd say orange and blue have to be my favorite. Yellow's a little bit sour, so... Yeah. And also, we got some more comments. We got more comments from Uncle Bub. He says, cookies and cream taste like butt. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, he also says, sour skills are better. Okay. You, yeah, I, you have your own personal opinions, Uncle Bub. Personally, I like the original Skittles, and you like the Sour Skittles. We have opinions, and uh, we are good with our opinions. And we have our own opinions on Skittles flavors. But at least we know we both like Skittles. And um, I think this one, when he says that's my favorite, he was talking about the uh, Sour Patch Kids. Yeah, pretty good. They're They're like the only sour candy I'll eat. <laughs> it's like the bomb, like the best sour candy in the world. And we got a comment from Danielle Jones. She says, I hate the yellow ones. Yeah, the yellow ones can be a little bit, you know, owie. And then Uncle Bub says, again, those commercial for Sour Patch Kids. Yep, I've been, I've been seeing a lot of commercials for Sour Patch Kids this Halloween. I guess they're trying to, you know, build up that money market, you know, getting money, 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 all, everywhere, <laughs> and Danielle Jones also says, um, I eat the red, blue, and orange out, and leave all the green and yellow in the bag, okay, yeah, uh, red is, red is okay, blue is pretty good, orange is the best, um, green, uh, I'm not, I'm somewhat a fan of green, but yellow is a little bit extra sour, and then Uncle Bub says, really cereal? Yeah, they actually made a cereal for Sour Patch Kids. I really, I really seen that. I actually seen somebody eat Sour Patch Kids cereal. Um, have you ever heard of this guy, um, uh, Markiplier? He actually did a video on Sour Patch Kids cereal. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. Um, definitely you should check that out. It's, it's really hilarious. And I, I haven't been able to find one at the store. Uh, we need to find, I need to find some Sour Patch Kids, um, cereal at our local <laughs> grocery store. And then Uncle Bum says, I like sour. Cool. I kind of like sour, but sour is like making my face goop. Uh, we got another comment from Danielle Jones. She says, I bought it for my kids and... It's never been opened. Lol, they said nope. <laughs> A never opened box of Sour Patch Kids cereal. Wow. 
you bought it for kids and then they didn't touch it. That's that's kind of crazy. I think it's because they were like, eh, this probably won't be like the candy, so I'm not going to risk it. I have a box you can have, you can do a review <laughs> since my kids won't eat it. Eh, possibly, possibly. Um, it's, um, sounds like a good idea. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, that actually is a good idea. Maybe I should. But I don't think I'd be eating in the studio. I think if I ate in the studio, I, I would get milk and all the cereal all over the keyboard and probably the screens and my microphone. And then I, and then all of a sudden, the, the program director, Philip, he might come in and be like, what are you doing? And then I'll be like, uh, reviewing? <laughs> and then I would get kicked off my show and the show would never ever air again and I'd be very sad. <laughs> But anyways, back onto the list. Um, Butterfingers is number seven on Forbes' list. Yes, Butterfingers. I have hadn't had a Butterfinger in a, in a long time. I think the reason why I liked Butterfingers back then is because um, on YouTube, I used to watch like a bunch of old Simpsons commercials with... Um, with um, Bart Simpson from The Simpsons. You know, remember those commercials where, you know, Homer wants to have, you know, Bart's Butterfinger bar? And Bart's like, nobody ran a finger on my Butterfinger. That's basically how Butterfinger, you know, got more popular. The Simpsons. The Simpsons made Butterfinger more popular. Like, seriously. any Anything that had The Simpsons on it, it was there. So, Butterfinger, Simpsons. So... Basically, the Simpsons helped, you know, make Butterfinger what they are today. With Butterfingers, and then they had, like, Butterfinger BBs, Butterfinger ice cream bars. They had a lot of stuff for, you know, yeah. We got more comments in the comments section. Woo! -woo! Uh, Uncle Bub says, keep it sealed. It may be money one day. Yeah, that's actually kind of true, because, you know, if you keep a sealed box of, you know, anything, it's worth money. Like, I have a sealed box of Buckeye Heroes, which is basically, like, Cheerios, except with a picture of, like, three famous Ohio State Buckeyes. I think, I know one of them is, um, A.J. Hawk, Anthony Schlegel, and I think Bobby Coburn are on the box, but I, I can't remember. It's a, it's a very, very long, long time i think it i think i still have it somewhere in my basement it, it's somewhere in my basement i'll have to check but uh yeah and uncle bob also says bart simpson made them popular yes the butterfinger was made popular by bart simpson and the simpsons so yeah it's pretty neat uh number six is nerds um i don't know why forbes put nerds up there on the list nerds is not i wouldn't consider nerds you know, a top, a top, you know, candy. I mean, I like nerds, but not that much. What is, what should have been on the list is Pop Rocks. Now, Pop Rocks, oh my god, they're delicious. They crackle in your mouth and it's like crazy. Like, seriously, it's like, it's like somebody decided to do crazy science with candy. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Uncle Bub says those commercials are ripped off from original Fruity Pebbles commercials. Okay. Uh, I guess Nerds is ripping off Fruity Pebbles, I guess. That's crazy. Number five is M&M's. Uh, Forbes put M&M's at number five. I don't know why. I think M&M's should have been, like, higher on the list. Probably, like, number three or number two. Who knows? But I actually like M&M's. M&M's are pretty good. I like the milk chocolate, you know, the original milk chocolate. I like the peanut. I like, um, I like the new um, M&M's they have. Um, the fudge brownie M&M's. If you have not had the fudge brownie M&M's, you need to go out and get yourself some fudge brownie M&M's. Because those M&M's are so delicious. It's like, take like a milk chocolate M&M &M, and then put a fudge a piece of fudge brownie 
in, you know, uh, the M&M. So, yeah. Basically, M&M's are, like, the candy to have. Like, the candy had to have. If you haven't had an M&M, you, you, you shouldn't have an M&M. You, you should have some M&M's. Go, go, the, the, go now. <laughs> And another comment from Uncle Bubby says, not nerds, Butterfinger. Oh, okay. I was getting confused. I thought you were talking about Butterfinger or nerds. <laughs> well, I didn't know you were talking about nerds or Butterfinger. But but thank you for clearing that up, Uncle Bub. Now back on to the list. Uh, Kit Kat bars is number four on their list. I don't know why they put Kit Kat there. Kit Kats are, are technically like chocolate, are like wafers put in chocolate. Like, seriously. It's just a cookie that's covered in chocolate. It's it's basically like a regular cookie. It's basically a cookie. How could you call a Kit Kat bar a candy? It's a cookie. It's it's basically a cookie just covered in chocolate. I still think Kit Kats are, you know, cookies. They're not they're not a candy. Hashtag Kit Kat not a candy. Ooh. Ooh. Come at me, bro. <laughs> but I usually have a Kit Kat once in a while, if I'm, if I have none of my favorite <laughs> Kit Kats. Well, if I have, well, wait, no, I'm getting myself, uh, I'm getting myself off track. So I'm getting myself off track. Um, basically, uh, boy, I'll eat a Kit Kat when I don't have like Hershey's or Reese's or M and M's with me. So yeah, and we got more comments blowing up in the comment section. Oh my goodness. Uh, my friend Marquis, he says, that's facts. And and also Uncle Bob says, nerds made the list because of packaging. They are, they always were the right size to pass out. Yeah, they're like, nerds are like kitty size. They're, they're small boxes. And like, like, the box would be like this shaped and then this shaped. And like, like, that's how like tall the boxes would be like seriously they're that small and honestly i want more i i would love to have more i think they got some big packs somewhere and then uh marquis said kick cat bars are the best i i agree i agree with that kick cat bars are good but are they the best maybe are they the best though i i don't know I actually don't know. We need to have a poll here. I wish we had a poll. <laughs> and Danielle Jones says she loves Kit Kats. That's cool. That's cool. And then uh, Uncle Bub says Kit Kats are shareable. Yes, they are. It's basically two candy strips that you can break off and then share with your friend. Or person that you want to share with it. Um... Marquis says Kit Kats are so candies all. Eh, I don't know. It's a cookie, but you pour chocolate. I've seen a lot of you know cookie wafers that have been poured with chocolate, and they and they call it a cookie. They still call it a cookie. I don't know about candy. <laughs> oh man. And then Uncle Bob says the chocolate makes some candy. Okay, and he also says a perfect cube. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, all right. So number three on Forbes's list is Twix. Now I've actually had Twix, which is basically a cookie that's cloaked in caramel and chocolate. Now, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Twix and their, you know, advertising team. But they say that there are two different kinds of Twix. I ate the left Twix and the right Twix, and it's the same thing. Like, there's no difference. Like, seriously, what were they thinking? What was Twix thinking of doing this? It's silly. It's very, very silly. Do not... You're, like, confusing so many people. Like, oh, my God, what is up with... What is what is the true Twix? Like, seriously, Twix, get get your stuff together. Get yourself together and make a better advertisement. Because that advertisement I hate. But Twix, they're pretty good. Um, I say better than the Kit Kat. 
Yeah, I th- I definitely do believe that Twix is better than Kit Kat. Anybody who disagrees with me can just leave their comments in the chat here below or wherever. Uh, Marquis says, lol, the left Twix is better. I don't know. <laughs> I still think they're the same. There's no, there's, there's no difference. There's absolutely no difference. Uncle Bub says, I love Twix, but it has... But it has to come from the right side. Again, I still think that they're the same. The left and the right Twix are the same. Uh, number two on Forbes' list is a Snickers bar. Who, who doesn't love a Snickers bar? It's delicious. I mean, seriously. Have you ever seen those commercials where, like, dude, eat a Snickers. And they're like, why? You get a little hostile when you're hungry. And then it's like, better? Better. Like, seriously, those types of commercials for Snickers are the best. Uh, even, you know, the Snickers bar, it's delicious. Even the Snickers ice cream bars, they're even deli- more delicious than, you know, the original Snickers bar. But, yeah, you know, peanuts, caramel, chocolate, and nougat, it's delicious. The Snickers bar is delicious. It, and it deserves number two. It definitely deserves number two. We got more comments. Uncle Bub says, silly sales. Yep, silly sales. Definitely silly sales. And Marquis says, everyone needs to eat a Snickers bar. Yes. And Uncle Bub just posted, hangry. Yes, hangry. It's a, it's a, it's a thing going around everybody when they get angry and hungry. And then the top ten... Most popular, and then like number one for their uh, best Halloween candy uh, is the Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Now I have to agree with Forbes. It is the best Halloween candy ever. Basically the best Halloween candy of all time. Like, seriously, you buy into a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup, it's delicious. It is delicious. Pretty, pretty delicious. And honestly, I fell in in love with the peanut butter cups back when I was like three or four and I've never stopped liking those Reese's cups those Reese's peanut butter cups those are delicious I even tried their Reese's puffs and it's delicious as well anything Reese's is gonna be you know delicious obviously and another comment from Uncle Bub um, about the Snickers bar they adopted the term all the time, everyone gets hangry. Yeah. It's true. Everyone does get hangry. Everyone does. And now for Forbes's top 10 worst um, Halloween candies. So we're about to talk about those, but, in, but before we do that, we got another comment from Uncle Bub. He says, probably the most popular and well-known. Yes, I agree the Reese's Cup is the most popular and well-known. Unless you're talking about the Snickers bar, but I think you're talking about the Reese's Cup. The Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. I, I think you're talking about the Reese's Cup. Yeah. So anyways, the top ten worst Halloween candies of all time by Forbes. Um, number ten is uh, Mary Jane's. Basically, they're like a peanut butter flavored candy that are like, that is like really chewy. I never had a Mary Jane like Mary Jane's before, but I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it's probably like rotten peanut butter or something, liquid peanut butter. I don't know. Uh, Uncle Bub says, "What about Bitto Honey?" I don't know. I never tried that candy. I never heard of Bitto Honey. I might have to look for that. I might have to look for that. Uh, but back to this list. Um, again, Mary Jane's never had them. Um, they're a peanut butter flavored chewy treat. I don't think that would have been good. But, uh, anyways, uh, number nine on Forbes' worst Halloween candies is Good and Plenty. Now, this is a candy my mom likes. Uh, I think the Good and Plenty are, like, not that good at all. Like, seriously, it's basically licorice wrapped in hard candy and it it just does not make any sense like seriously it doesn't it just doesn't 
Uh, n- uh number eight is licorice. So, like just plain licorice. Um, I don't like licorice. Licorice tastes like a sole of a shoe, like the sole of your shoe. It tastes like rubber, like burnt rubber from like a tire. Like I hate licorice. Licorice is disgusting. It is very, very, very disgusting. And we got some Uncle Bub comments here. Uh, he says they stick to your teeth and Mary Janes are awful. Yes. Um, uh, thank you for your comments of the Mary Janes, Uncle Bub. Thank you for telling us that they do, in fact, are awful. All right. Anyways, um, again, licorice, not that good. It's disgusting. I hate licorice. But not the not the red licorice. The red licorice is good, but the original licorice... Bleh. Um, Number seven. Number seven on Forbes' list of the worst candies of all time. Well, the worst Halloween candies of all time is Smarties. Now, I have a problem with this. I like Smarties. Smarties are delicious. Like, seriously. Smarties are the best, like, the best candy on uh, for Halloween. Like, seriously. Smarties, you can't go wrong with Smarties. Everyone likes Smarties. Everyone. But, yeah. Uh, number six is Tootsie Rolls. I can see a problem with that. It's um too hard. Tootsie Rolls are too hard, and they're chewy, and they can get stuck to your teeth. Uh, number five, Peanut Butter Kisses is basically Mary Jane's again, so let's move on. Number four, N- Neko Wafers. Basically, chalky candy discs wrapped in wax paper. I don't believe that would have been delicious either. Uh, number three on their list is Wax Coke Bottles. Now, I've never tried this, but it's somehow little bottles that you bite into the tasteless wax to get a little bit of Coca-Cola. Like, seriously, why would you bite into a tasteless bottle just to get, like, a little tiny sip of Coca-Cola? It's, 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 it's a little weird. It's, it's weird. But anyways, moving on. Number two is candy corn. I agree with it. Candy corn sucks. It just sucks. Candy corn is the worst candy. <coughs> but somehow they didn't make it number one. They didn't make candy corn number one. That goes to circus peanuts. Soft, orangey, pink, chewy, peanut-shaped candies. They're the worst. somehow the worst candy to get about to Halloween. To, you know, Halloween kids and visitors and whatever. I never tried a circus peanut, but that should circus peanut should have been number two. Candy corn should have been number one because candy corn is the worst candy of all time. Seriously, it is. Candy corn sucks. It sucks. Totally sucks. We got more comments from Uncle Bub. He says, "I hate licorice, black licorice especially." Now I hate the black licorice, but the red licorice, like the strawberry licorice. That's actually pretty good, but the black or licorice, I don't even like. My mom likes black licorice, licorice, but I don't know why. When I took a bite of that black licorice, it tastes like a tire. It seriously tastes like a tire. It's insane. Uh, he also says flavored powder sugar. Powdered sugar. Um, he also said, what Tootsie Rolls? They are nuts. Yeah, they put Tootsie Rolls as the worst candy. It, it's kind of true. Kind of true. I like Tootsie Rolls, but they are, they're a little less chewy and get stuck to your teeth. He also says, they also had wax teeth and wax lips. Wow, those are candies? Ugh. I wouldn't imagine, I wouldn't imagine be, like, having those. Probably taste... Like garbage. And then marshmallows. They are always stale. 
Marshmallow are always stale. Okay. Yeah, I, I bet some candies are stale. And some candies are not that stale. But honestly, if I could add, add a candy to, like, the best Halloween candy list, it would be hot tamales. Because hot tamales are delicious. They are really, really delicious. Like, it's cinnamon. Like, that fierce cinnamon taste. And it's just delicious. Like, seriously. Hot tamales are the best candy. Well, one of the best candies of all time. So, yeah. All right. Well, I do believe that I got done talking with these candies, and I need to take a break. <laughs> a, a, a short music break. But when we come back, we're going to talk about Ohio State football, the review of the Ohio State-Nebraska game. So, yeah, that's going to be fun. And up. Uh, Uncle Bob says Circu circus peanuts are, are always stale. I've actually never tried a uh, circus peanut before, but um, but uh, yeah. And uh, hot tamales are the bomb. Yes, hot tamales are the bomb, Uncle Bub. They are. All right, time for me to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the Ohio State Nebraska game and uh, give you my own opinions on it. So yeah. This is Big C in the Morning on WUDG Underground Columbus, home of the Unsigned Arts, and let's get some music going up in here. Uh, let's go with Brian Alvin with It's You. That sounds like a pretty good uh, song right there. Anyways, we'll be right back.
most here at Ohio Media School was that, you know, I got to um, learn more about videography and, you know, just more on how to work in a group culture and, you know, business-like. And also, um, I would definitely say what I'm going to do after this is continue my DJ career on tour um, and start selling out festivals and shows and stuff like that, hopefully. And, but big shout out to Young Nisa here, big shout out to Jay Love, and big shout out to Nakia Booker. You guys are great, thanks. All right, we are back on WDG Underground Columbus, home of the other Saturdays. So this is Big C in the morning. Now it's time to get to my favorite part of today's show. We're talking about Ohio State football again. Yay, but before we go into that, let's go into the comments, and um, there's one comment that I forgot to notice about, and it's Uncle Bub, again, he says his favorite candy bar is a zero bar. I never tried a zero bar before, but um, maybe sometime I'll I'll try a zero bar. Who, who knows? <laughs> if I can even find the zero bars. But anyways, right now we're talking about Ohio State football. The Ohio State Buckeyes took down the Nebraska Cornhuskers 52 to 17, a 50 point season opening game. Woody Hayes would be proud of that. He'd be so proud of that. So the Buckeyes won by 35 points against the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Now the Buckeyes are 1 and 0 overall and 1 and 0 in the Big 10. <laughs> so uh yeah, this was pretty they, the Nebraska Cornhuskers had us in the first quarter, but the, the Buckeyes took care of it um, uh, with the rest of the game. So it was it was a little close, but uh, thankfully <laughs> uh, we didn't lose. But uh, that offense looks pretty nice. The defense it it looked they looked good, but they could use a little a little more um um help. Like the defense was not is remember the defense this year is not like the defense last year. The defense last year was pretty good, but since you know Chase Young and all those good defensive guys are gone and are playing in the NFL, you obviously have to rebuild. Well, not re technically rebuild, reload your defense, and reloading can be you know a little bit of a little bit of a hassle, but um, but uh. I still think the defense can be a little bit better. They just they just need a little work to fix up the little areas in the uh, going against N Nebraska. Like there were a few moments where like okay they should have tackled this guy or they should have done better defense on this guy. Like they're a little like oopsie doodles here and there, but overall the Buckeyes played good. They did play. Did play good this week. Um, Ohio State had 28 first downs. Uh, Nebraska, 17 first downs. The Buckeyes were 8 and 13, late, late for 13 in third down efficiency. Nebraska was 4 and 4 out of 10 in third down efficiency. So basically, Ohio State's better at 
third down conversions. The Buckeyes were perfect in fourth down conversions. I feel like Ohio State has become the fourth down conversion masters. Like, seriously. Ryan Day is basically trying to replicate what Woody Hayes would have done. It was like, fourth and one, go for it. Go for it on fourth down. Seriously. Um, The passing game was strong with this one. Uh, Ohio State had seven... No, no, not seven, but 276 passing yards. Um, Justin Fields, 20 for 21. That is unbelievable. He basically replicated what that Wisconsin quarterback did uh, week one. Uh, so, yeah, that was amazing for uh, Justin Fields. Only two touchdowns for Justin Fields, like two passing touchdowns. Uh, but he had a rushing touchdown and 54 yards rushing. That was pretty pretty good. And um, speaking of rushing, uh, the rushing for the Ohio State Buckeyes wasn't that good. Um, Trey Sermon and Master Teague never, you know, just went boom. Like, seriously. I don't know what – I think it's because of that defensive line Nebraska had. That defensive line Nebraska had is pretty, pretty tough, I had to say. Nebraska is a very different team from last season. I do have to say about that. that that's pretty different. Um, Nebraska had 210 rushing yards. Uh, the Buckeyes had 215 rushing yards. So that's pretty nice. Um, penalties. Um, Ohio State, they had the least amount of penalties. Nebraska had the most. And speaking about Nebraska having the most penalties, I was shocked. To see how, like, dirty Nebraska was playing. Like, they were targeting all of our players. Like, they were using... They were going after their heads. Two Nebraska players got ejected for targeting two Ohio State players. In, like, different plays. Like, seriously. You can't do that. That's illegal. You can give them a concussion. Or, you know, like, severe neck injuries. Like, seriously, you do not target somebody with your head. You could hurt yourself. You could hurt the player. That is a big no-no. And apparently, Nebraska got away with one of those targeting calls. But the other two were called. And two players were ejected. Now those two players will not be able to play the first half of, the, of their next game. Which is... It's pretty sucky for them, but they should know the rules. You are not allowed to target anybody with your head in their chest, like to your opponent's chest or your head or or their head. Because if you do that, you will get ejected. And you're not going to be playing football for the first half of your next game. So, yeah. Um, two turnovers for Nebraska, only one turnover for Ohio State, even though... That was kind of suspect. I I thought, you know, Chris Olave was, you know, down. And besides, they were trying to, you know, hurt my boy Chris Olave because Chris Olave is the greatest wide receiver I've ever seen play football. Like, Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, those those two guys are pretty awesome at football. Like, seriously. They ain't. They are amazing wide receivers. I think Ohio State's probably wide receiver you here. Like, it's unbelievable what these wide receivers are doing. And and I think Ohio State's quarterback you too. I mean, I mean we got Justin Fields, we got Jack Miller, and we're possibly getting a, a new quarterback, hopefully. Um, this guy um, who decommitted from Texas is now looking into other schools and Predictions are saying that he might go to Ohio State, and I hope he does come to Ohio State because we need more quarterbacks. We need a lot more quarterbacks if Je- because if Justin Fields decides to go to the NFL, then I'll say, come on down. You're the next uh, quarterback for Ohio State. Like it's, like, it's like the price is right, people. Ohio State like quarterbacks are, is like the price is right. It's like the price is right. Seriously. Um... So yeah, I think Ohio State did amazing in these in these games. Um, well, in this game, we got to see um, 
of a, a new quarterback, uh, Jack Miller, scores first ever touchdown. And, then, and it was like at the end of the game. Basically, the Buckeyes were trying to run up the score. Honestly, that's what Woody Hayes would have done. Run up the score. I mean, he did run up the score when he went up against um, that team up north back in 1968. Because, you know, there's that one famous quote he said. Um, when he was when a reporter asked, why did you go for two against that team up north? He said, because I couldn't go for three. That's basically, basically, that was what Ryan Day was doing. He was taking a page out of the Woody Hayes book. Like, seriously, Ryan Day is amazing at what he's doing. He's, he's taking no, he, he's, like, take, showing no mercy. Like, no mercy at all. And it was pretty awesome to see, you know, all those touchdowns and stuff. But, uh, offense is looking, looking like an A-plus offense. The defense, um... The defense could use a little work, but I think they're they worked out those kinks um, this week because they got a pretty big game ahead of them this week because they're versing Penn State this week. So, as you can see, I'm wearing the jersey that Penn State got upset in. Well, the well the jerseys Ohio State wore when they upset Penn State. And the horseshoe back in 2017 by one point. One point. So, yeah. Um, this is going to be... This is a big rivalry game. I don't know how Penn State and Ohio State became rivals. But I think it became... We became rivals uh, during the 2011 season when we had our own scandals. And that um, we had, like, you know, close battles. Because the thing is, every time we versed Penn State... The winner of this game went on to win, you know, the Big Ten championship, so to speak. Um, this is going to be a very tough game. Even though Penn State lost to uh, Indiana by <laughs> one point, it's going to be a very tough game. I, I mean, you got Penn State, who has a, who has a pretty good offense and a pretty good defense. I think the Buckeyes with the town with they just need to make sure their offensive line just you know protects Justin Fields and have the defensive line just break through the that Penn State offensive line and sack the quarterback like sack him as as many times as you can and you know i think that this is going to be a great game i mean there's no wide out at Penn State so that's a pl that's a definite plus so, with no whiteout and all that good stuff, I think Ohio State will win a close one. They, I'm actually a little worried about this game, though, but I think the Buckeyes will win. <laughs> I want them to win, even though I'm a little bit scared, but I think the Buckeyes will win... Oh, uh, let's see. The Buckeyes will win um, 35 to 31 in Happy Valley with no fans. Because that's my, that's my prediction. I mean, you, you, you can have your own predictions. I don't mind, but I'm going with my prediction. Buckeyes win 35-31 in Happy Valley by four points. It's going to be a very, another one of those Ohio State-Penn State close games. It is. All right. Now that I've uh, I am done talking about Ohio State for now, uh, we're gonna take a break. But when we come back, the Friday shout out. It's gonna be a great one. You don't want to miss it. It's epic. So this is Big C in the morning on WUDG Underground Columbus, home of the unsigned artists. And now for another song to play. This is Amira the Song Stress with Can't Hide. It's a pretty good song. We'll be right back.
so consumed. What a rush standing here. I feel your energy. No one told me before about this synergy. And I can't Tina Green and I enjoyed Ohio Media School because of the staff. They have been really helpful and encouraging and the students. Um, what I plan on doing next is videographer and podcast and just working on my dreams and see where I go. Bye for now. back on WDG Underground Columbus, home of the Unsigned Artists, and this is Big C in the Morning. All right, so Friday shout-out. This week's Friday shout-out is going to go to the Los Angeles Dodgers because you know what? I've been waiting for them to win a World Series for a long time because back in 2017, I wanted them to beat the Astros to win the World Series. Apparently, they lost. 
And then soon afterwards, they found out that the Astros were cheating. Well, that was great. And then Dodgers make the World Series in 2018, but lose to the Boston Red Sox. And surprise, later it was found out the Red Sox were cheating. So you lose to two cheaters, and you're like, why? Why do I deserve this? And the answer? You don't deserve this. Because it's it, it sucks. It really, really sucks. It does. And then in 2019, you were in the National League Championship. You lose to the Washington Nationals, and they go on to beat the Astros, who apparently were, were trying to cheat in that World Series, but failed. So as you can see, cheaters, they never prosper. They do not prosper. And then, when all hope was lost, helpless, trying to win that coveted World Series title, the Dodgers beat the Tampa Bay Rays, who have never won a World Series. They beat the Tampa Bay Rays 4-2 to in the World Series, and they win their 7th World Series title for the whole city of LA. Their first ever title since 1988. You know how long that is? That is 32 years, people. The 32 year drought is over for the Dodgers. It's over. And now LA is becoming a sports city again because you got. You got the Lakers winning the championship, and then the Dodgers win the champion, the championship. So the next Los Angeles team to win a championship has to be the L.A. Rams or the L.A. Chargers. They're both in Los Angeles, so take your pick on who wins. But I think that it's time for the Rams to win a championship. I want the Rams to beat Tom Brady in the NFC title game, and then the Rams to somehow upset probably, you know, the, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl. But, hey, we don't know yet. So, we'll just have to wait and see. Anything can happen. Anything can happen, people. So, special shout out to the Los Angeles Dodgers. Congratulations on winning the 2020 World Series. Even though I wanted my Cleveland Indians to win, it's better. It's best that if you guys won, because you guys had a World Series title on. 32 years. Well, the Indians, we hadn't won the World Series title in 72 years. So, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is my time. It's been an hour, so it's currently probably 11 o'clock or whatever time you guys are in. I don't know, West Coast time or Mountain time or Central time. But in Eastern Standard Time, it's 11 am so it's time for me to go next week two new topics we're going to talk about them it's going to be fun and we hope you enjoy it well well, i hope you enjoy it there's no we because um nobody's with me so yeah oh well but anyways thank you all for tuning in to another great show of a big scene in the morning i'm really glad everybody could come well some people could come but anyways time for me to go This has been Big C in the Morning on WUDG Underground Columbus, home of the Unsigners. My name is Big C, and I am out of here. I'll see you all next week. Have a great rest of your Friday and a great weekend. And also, go Bucks!